Okay, the recording has been started. Can you? Yeah. Okay. So, uh, as we are going for today's Amazon Docker problem. So this is one of the question which is, which I am looking, uh, which is asked. Right. The set logger, get logger one. So both are almost same, right? Optimal logger. So. so that was like somebody has mentioned. Yeah, optimal locker for a package, uh, which is basically, I think, uh, based on a size. Major requirement is. So we can define our so use. Okay, requirements. No requirements will come, but I think these are the requirements we are discussing at the top. Yeah. We and need to narrow down that. Okay. But you should be able to schedule a pickup, right? Something like that. Where, you know, um, you have already uh, scheduled some pickups. And then uh, there is one more package arriving. So how he will actually, you know, find a slot. So he can um, either actually. Mm -hmm. So go ahead. No, I'm just thinking loud. You know, yeah, you you can go also. So, yeah. uh, I think you are saying that uh, if uh, multiple packages for a same person is arriving. Yeah, it is for only single person. So there can be possible that there is a multiple lockers option. It's not like I think. Uh, so what I am reading is where I am reading is like, it's mentioned that uh, whenever a user is, a uh, user has scheduled an order, the, and and based on he wants for Amazon locker option, he clicked something where Amazon locker option, then it would be uh, that the system would give him a code for that package, wherever that location is. You're getting my point? So wherever that package is, so for example, that person has done multiple orders, he'll get related so to I, that. I to think that as code. soon as the packages arrive, uh, uh, they will uh, they will send the code. So if all packages arrive together, so I think that is the first thing. Delivery guy should be able to find the optimal locker for a package. Or I, I think we can say slash packages. And then uh, I think system should send code to the user. And then user should be able to open the locker and pick up the package. Okay, so three things we are looking optimal locker for a package, uh, sending code to the user, and hmm. user should be able to open a locker. I think it just makes the, sense. Yeah. The optimal thing will cover everything. Either you will put it in one box, one locker, or you'll put in two lockers. And then system, if, they, if, if there are two lockers, system should send two different codes. And how this code would be generating as soon as whenever the uh, uh, status is. The code linked. will get generated as soon as the uh, delivery guy will put the package inside. So there would be, uh, I, I am assuming there would be four, three, four options for the status of the delivery, like in, del in, in process or packaging, like. No, 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 we, we are not dealing that. That is not so that. Uh, I think that could be a different problem. This is when the package is there, delivery. Okay. Think in that way. Uh, you go to ATM, you punch code, 
and you get the money the same way delivery guy come with the package it will ask system that uh, or probably i don't know how that works but it will uh, it it has to put some details uh, about the package size i think yeah it will put the details of the package size and uh, then the system will uh, assign a locker as soon as the delivery guy will put the package inside close it a message will get sent it to the user okay okay so what one more question i seem you know because i'm not very clear about how the lockers are hmm. and i have not used them so is it a, a big locker wherein the delivery guy comes and he puts in all the uh, packages for different users in the same locker is it like that no 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 uh, one locker is assigned to one user think in that way when we go to gym there are so many lockers we put our uh, stuff there close it and put our own lock and only now i can open that locker uh, with my my key once i took my stuff out then that locker is available to anybody else and then there would should be some retention policy that uh, if if the user didn't come for that much time like gym also what they do if the uh, if they find that the locker is closed for like two days they break the uh, thing and remove the stuff like in that i'm just giving an analogy yeah yeah mm-hmm. so locker is once it is assigned to a user it would be for that user that's it and generally what happens amazon has put their locker so many places safeway uh, if you are uh, from uh, bellevue area there is a lot of apartments here like i think there is one central park east mm-hmm. okay. where they have the amazon locker I, i i think the whole idea was uh, i only use locker when uh, they give option if you if you are not a prime member mm-hmm. uh if they are if you are not a prime member uh then you can have a free delivery in the locker something like that Mm-hmm. if you are prime member then this whole locker thing won't uh, come into picture because then you have free delivery at your house mm-hmm. and okay, then so the other thing we... which they do at the locker is they do one more thing uh, mm-hmm. might be this is out of scope for this like you can even drop a package yeah i think yeah user should also be able to drop a package so delivery guy should be able to pick it right Or yeah to be able to pick it yeah once i dropped to package there it was like uh, i remember i went there there was some amazon person he told uh, drop in this bin and then that's it and leave oh. so might be they don't use locker for dropping this dropping okay like how we go in fact that you go and drop in a bin yeah yeah and that's it we don't uh, because you put the label and all other thing delivery guy will come and pick it from the bin no need to open a locker yeah so that guy is not that much uh, correct yeah. uh, and assign locker based on user location I, again i think that is not part of this because you choose a locker uh, before delivery okay so... because because you will while doing a order you say drop to my home or drop to locker and then you choose a locker there itself like uh, like this uh, uh, QFC or something. Just uh, uh, use this QFC location for this. I don't know what happens when if all the things are full. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. So that might also be the case, right? If uh, the lockers are there and if all of them are full, so then uh, or maybe how it how it is scheduled. The scheduling yeah. part becomes very important in that case, right? Yeah, but. I think so it will ask it will go to the other location which is more near like it's not possible that all the uh, all which, the locations of the lockers no, would be filled no no we can do that but user has not selected that location user told drop to this qfc now we are going against the will of the user mm-hmm. so it so, would be like it will not be sh- delivered delivered on that i day. think that could be a interview clarification question but here think like uh, uh here the requirement is uh, uh when the we, we 
like don't worry about if a locker is not there think about there is always a locker Mm-hmm. okay 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 so that will be a good thing yeah because if it doesn't have a locker so you will have to you know, specify a fixed time slot maybe they will assign okay you can pick it from this date to this date or else then it is going to be picked up or maybe no, i think there is no fixed slot uh, they, they it is like when it is there the user will get the sms or whatever and we will assume like de- delivery guy will keep on coming back and reattempting after okay. every one single day okay no problem okay. so for now let's do that but yeah yeah That's i think it. first two requirements are uh, or if we can do three first three that would be uh, good i think all other things could be so what i i will be saying what are the entities which would be here first of all a locker okay definitely so are you i'm just giving thought in what is locker like oh so looks like this is as similar to that uh, parking, parking lot parking lot i think yeah <laughs> okay yeah because okay. we That's are so usually it is like you know most of them we can use it because of size yeah. i think so in the size like if you have small medium and the large right we can only have three slices hmm so we can have three different uh, objects for it or maybe it's the same locker and then we just assign the attribute right so i think that i think that, right we need to first define our uh... okay so uh, so i let's only define the entities first right yeah and then we can actually yeah. and right so, now again another question are we considering like there are a lot of locker locations or like we we discuss this for parking lot because uh, i am thinking like we can have multiple locations or yeah. are we considering only one location for the locker i think to start with have only one location like for that i'll be assigning like how many how many lockers are there in that particular yeah then then you need an so uh, so maybe an array of lockers and then that yeah, would be a location definitely so, array of lockers in some mm-hmm. parent class or something like uh, yeah so uh, are we going with a locker ident- entity i think uh, yeah locker entity is fine but i think like uh, santosh mentioned first we, we should have locker sizes okay so let it be mm-hmm. okay that's first to find out it can be uh, enum. enum yeah enum should be fine yeah uh, it's small medium Larger. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Then your locker should take a uh, size. Mm-hmm. Uh, is that locker can take the ID of uh, the locker? Packet? Locker should no. That should not be part of its uh, constructor. It should only have size and its own ID. Yeah, ID should be there. Correct. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then I think you just for now create some methods, and we know we don't know it. You define. So, but when uh, how come the delivery guy will know if this locker is empty or not? Yeah, so like parking lot, we have that is available. I'm creating those methods over here only. I'm I'm creating like a is available. Okay. Mm-hmm. We'll define it later. Just keep on parking them. No, it should be by default true. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. So, 
operation and then what 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 other entities it should have it should have something like assign a packet add packet um so if like uh, add package mm -hmm. and then okay. it and then pa is available we should be true yeah you, i think you can it's okay you can pass it for now yeah so if okay if so it's then, available you add a package and there is is available will be false in that case false. Yeah, that makes sense yeah. oh, oh sorry okay false. okay false and then it should take something like a packet in the parameter line 32 uh i'm thinking like we need to we'll create, create a, a package class. yeah we'll yeah. create is a package i yeah, thought package it should be another entity that is a python so uh we'll come back we, to that uh, don't okay. worry about that first i think as fast as what else is there hmm. <laughs> it looks only two of them uh -huh. no so there should uh, be uh, how about the code where the code should live docker mm. system will be making something correct kind of yeah a single time class right yeah mm -hmm. no but uh, uh, but blocker uh, should be interested in the code i'm just thinking out loud uh i think we need to make a user wait wait why user so that so so every locker will get a signed a code where that code should live in the locker entity or somewhere outside oh you need to say a code hmm. so that code will be a part of that locker for i that think duration. that will be a locker yes uh, uh, it can be it... self generated for example if uh, i am taking the package and is available then uh, i'll be saying uh, some kind of a function over there and assign some kind of a code like okay we'll come back to the later generate no, no code generating code function. should not be at the part of locker for sure yeah it should be independent right hmm my question was storing lock code should be part of locker or not like or it should it could be like some hash map uh, the base system is but if you don't store it in the locker uh, because then um, where are we going to store it because no that's what i'm telling you, you mentioned what a singleton class that should hold the, this locker okay. has this code oh okay you mean to say mapping there with the id of locker and that code. yeah something like that okay, that also is fine yeah okay so i think then code should not be a property of locker yeah it makes sense okay but we'll still have a entity of a code right something like that yeah something like this is mapped to something yeah okay so code and now if we are generating notifications then we will have something for that also we can do package so it so i think locker looks good uh, add package remove package is available all these things i am thinking uh, is there like we need to assign how many uh, lockers are available in that particular like, like how many small medium large no that would be like significant class like which i think that be. would be created in locker system okay like something but okay let's move uh, uh, spending that much time on locker uh, yeah. yeah let's go to the package and then go to the yeah. locker system yeah and the code mm -hmm. so that would be id size uh here this so package would have many things okay it's size um uh, package would have uh, user information for which user it's... i think that would be what we really wanted is just i think package uh, you can leave it for now we'll assume that it has everything you if you want just to find some basic thing but uh, 
ID and you put like self uh, user or something. Okay, so for user, we don't want to have an entity. Yeah, uh, it will take a user entity. What I meant. Uh -huh. Any kind of a user, it's there. Yeah, I think this should be fine. So we'll come over. We'll come back over here later. Yeah. So. Uh, Locker system. Hmm. Uh, this would first be an ID location. First we should, first we should define. Uh, uh, first we should define uh, this delivery guy. I think it, okay, it's but not he is an actor, an so he will be a. Okay, so he will be so, an object. Yeah. <laughs> so delivery guy would be having uh, yeah, list what? of packages, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah. So we, I am considering over here that uh, it should be uh, small. For example, is some kind of a I I can make it a constant like it it's ten. Think. Uh, like right. its no, limit think, is ten. No, I think you just created a list and that's it. For now, yeah. just uh, if I would be there, I will yeah, just list array it. or something. Yeah, yeah. That's and cool. then put a command that uh, generate list of small locker in the same way like you can have a small medium yeah. and yeah. large yeah we can uh, you know add that later also right? yeah yeah okay. we know that is a list so i think that's right good. yeah so okay. let's make a uh, after this we'll be making medium okay so I think then we will be creating. Uh... We'll have to have a code, a class for a code. Okay. No, the. Uh, that, it we... should not be in the. Okay. I'm just passing right now. Let's see. Uh, so you were saying, like, you know, in the locker system, we will have a map which will map with the code. To and the locker. the locker, right? Yeah, and then so we we'll, we should have a code as a entity separate, and uh, yeah, that will be one thing, and and you so said we, we should have those actors also as a class, right? The user and the delivery. I was thinking we can have the code in the locker itself. Yeah, so means the delivery guy also is a part of the locker. No, delivery guy is not part of, of the locker. Okay. Delivery guy will. Delivery guy. So, okay, let's first define the interfaces here. Mm -hmm. Locker system. What locker system is doing? Locker system is. Uh, uh, locker okay. system is accepting packages, right? Yeah, he will actually. Delivery guy will uh, actually access the locker system. To deliver the packages, okay. Okay, so so what should locker system should accept? Locker system should accept the package. Locker system should accept the package, and locker system should check whether uh, the package oh, size that, is uh, whatever so, the package size so is, is fine. which uh, locker would should be assigned. Implementation is later. I'm just uh, uh, thinking about the interfaces. So mm -hmm. can you come back? To the line sixty-two. Okay. Mm -hmm. What you are saying? Uh, can you? So, what should? So this is interface uh, to what is like add package. The add package is already there. Uh, uh, Where it is there? 
I'll be saying check size. No, no, no. That should not be part of the again. Yeah. Add package for the uh, delivery guy, right? So, so what it should take? It should take a package. So what I was thinking, it should take a package. Yeah, it will be a package object, right? Package object and the user details. You no, know, package has user details, so we don't have to worry separately. We can. Package would be having everything, like its entities, user, package size, ID, everything. Oh, okay, okay. So that will be a part of that. Okay, no. Problem. So, so we can just comment that what it should be doing. So it should be finding the locker. uh generating the code and assign the locker no uh, notify the user generate the code uh Yeah, when you generate the code, you you actually have mapped that with the user, right? So, so what I was thinking in this way: generate the code and add to the locker. Okay. And notify to the user as well about the code. so these things i'm thinking but now i'm still confused and debating in my mind is uh, this add package should actually add a package or find a locker yeah so actually so, so, we need to so have basically so basically this guy should return a locker to the delivery guy and delivery guy should uh, and so put that package inside and then but i think this is also fine if we want to keep it simplified that yeah. Uh, yeah because what me... what is happening add package it is actually going to the package class which has an id which has a package size and mm. also the user information right so mm. based on all this he is going to find a suitable package okay mm -hmm. so sorry locker in the locker system and then that locker will be assigned to a particular package for that package Okay. And then that guy will push that in that locker. Otherwise, uh, it will. Otherwise, if it is full, then it's just going to say uh, it's all all sold out or maybe something like that. Yeah. If full, uh, no vacancy. Yeah. Return package back. so he he won't have an access right so, so the no. locker system will have some doors right they will open on its own or something like no, that no i was thinking like uh, uh, make it quite automated delivery guy will uh, just put the package on a belt oh it will go and push it it will okay. go and push in the locker mm -hmm. and send the code if it couldn't it will give the package back to delivery guy or mm -hmm. or uh, we can make it more uh, uh, in that way mm -hmm. or more automated if, if it couldn't it will retry up exponentially but hmm okay <laughs> but uh, yeah, i was just thinking uh, it will return uh, back to delivery guy yeah that's it and if delivery uh, again delivery guy will put it back into its uh, list or yeah. uh, whatever and retry after some time yeah makes sense So at least keep it simple. Full return back to the delivery. Guy. Yeah, that should be fine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So okay. So I think I should be right. Uh, we should be writing the finding the locker. Yeah, we'd be. That details will be there, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. but that is not uh, like a public uh, method. Hmm. Yeah. That we we are not exposing that. Uh, so we can. What else is a public interface there? Uh, okay, so this is a package. Now user will come to access the 
its package right so he will also enter all the details so uh, what the user code. will come user will come so the code so 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 what would be the method here pick up pick okay, up package pick up. And that again will be public. Uh, yeah, that has to be a also public. Mm -hmm. Pick up. So what we need? We need the locker. Need, then it needs a locker. No, why it needs a locker? Locker. Only ID. ID. Sorry, code. ID. Code. Locker ID. Actually, no. He only will have a code, right? If no, it needs the lock. Yeah, it depends. Yeah, you are right. It so can only put code. a code yeah. automatically where the th is. uh yeah i remember it yeah if oh yeah got it like if for example somewhere outer uh, there is a keypad and it then the user just needs to type the code and automatically that locker will open correct i think that should be the way mm -hmm. because internally it will find the locker id and everything then it will make our thing little complex now Let's we have now we have to search against uh, all the codes against all the lockers uh well okay so we have a code right we and we are going to have a map we need to have a map yes okay. if we are having a map we can actually find within of one actually, i was thinking that, on the yeah. other way i was thinking locker and code map but yeah we can reverse it code it is and like locker. locker code and then uh, in the map locker code and the I, I, uh, value would be the locker id yeah Maybe have a map for both ways in case if you need it. Yeah, we can have a reverse map. I think yeah. Mm -hmm. Where we so, need to create a map actually. First of it, all, here it, only. Yeah, for now it will be part of this class. Okay. Okay. What else pickup should do? Pickup should. Uh, Uh, See, he should be able to find the locker based on the code, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, then he's just going to. Soon, yeah? Then he's just going to return it, right? Yeah, he will open the locker for the user. Okay. Why find locker again? Because you have he just has a code. so based on the code is going to find the locker id or locker and then he will actually open that uh, locker if it's a door he will open it or if it's a automated system he will just get the lock uh, package and uh, give it to that uh, wherever the tray is right push it to the tray oh, if the code expired. is expired then uh, just return some error or message yeah that the method package is already shipped back to the user oh, to the sender yeah a message should be fine yeah so any other uh, public method we need to find so when he is actually finding a locker opening a locker and the user takes that he need to actually return the locker to our pool correct so then those things the small locker large yeah, locker yeah 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 open yeah. the locker and as soon as the user close it yeah. uh so, it should uh, yeah it should clear the entry make the locker available yeah, yeah locker should be that that so whatever the locker entity we will be getting from this uh like we we need to store something like locker id and the locker entity over there hmm. object locker object and in a map and then whatever the locker object will be getting we just need to check like a, for example we need to mark whatever the locker will be having locker dot is available is equal to false mm, that we will do when the transaction is complete yeah we'll do yeah, at the end it will be at the end and just like i was just okay. showing that it yeah. should be something like that Okay, that is doable. Uh, and uh, I'm thinking like that that assign that map of ID and the locker entity, like locker object, mm -hmm. would be over here. Or 
Uh, just for now, a... that could live here. But uh, okay, what else is missing here? Uh, so, so I think the, these these two public methods will cover our two use cases. Yeah, so at least that is what our requirement is, right? So we okay. just take it up. And, and, and but how delivery guy will access locker system? How delivery guy will access? Another access? service, or I, I would be saying that so that use case is like um, somewhere where that. Uh, Delivery guy already know the location of. No, no, it's not uh, like that it, because there is only one lock right now, locker location, and I no, think no. We, don't, we don't even have the delivery uh, person class defined. How would be saying that? How the lock uh, delivery guy would know that he needs to go to particular location? If he knows that he needs to go to particular location, then are we thinking like? Uh, in in that, uh, no, my question was very simple: How delivery guy will access locker system? Now we are going towards how the package will how from the package. My question is very simple: Like this is a delivery person. Are we sending the locker system object to this guy, or? How we we are defining a pattern between a delivery person and locker system. One way is like delivery person is uh, uh, one way is this uh, delivery person is getting locker system as a input. Oh, but that will. I'm just throwing yeah throwing some random ideas. So we should think in. Proper direction. So delivery person actually should just access the locker system. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That took. Okay. okay. But uh, if that. So. Okay. You are saying that if he has many packages, okay, he has to. Go and distribute at many different locations. So he has to find a locker system of a particular location assigned to him. So he can see how many of uh, uh, these uh, lockers are available in that slot. So therefore, he needs a locker system also. Yeah, I think that should be fine. Or probably, yeah, or probably it will iterate. Uh, it will iterate over the packages. Or might be we are there is some locker uh, service class. Uh, or something like a, a we are injecting a dependency which is independent of that and uh, okay yeah so it will go indirectly access the whole system again yeah yeah and then delivery guy is like uh, so delivery guy will say uh, Something like uh, I was thinking, uh, execute. I think the locker system is also behaving the same thing. Execute delivery. So in that delivery, he will keep. He will find. He will iterate through whatever packages he has, and then he will mm. call the add package for each and every package, and then uh, yeah. Yeah, it will. It will keep on finding uh, from locker service. It will ask like for this package. Uh, Give me locker system or whatever we have, and uh, or I was thinking, yeah. So like you mentioned, like it will have something like a while loop, yeah. And then it will, it will, the while loop would be for all the packages. Yeah, so it read through all the packages and then uh, each and every package. For hmm. uh, for the locker uh, service, actually, it will call the locker system, and then he will use that uh, member function add package. So that add package should take care of all the the package details, everything, and then push into that. Package. So, so it, it will say get uh, lock. Uh, okay. 
Okay, yeah. I'll, it will I'll just send a package and it will give like where it should go. And then. Yeah, add package. Yeah. Yeah, makes sense. Okay, I think this is good. This is fine, yeah. Uh, we, even I, I don't need to define this much. We could, we could have put that in a comment. Yeah. But yeah, uh, yeah. so delivery person will take locker service, something which is independent entity, which will have information of all the locker systems. Based on the package, it will find uh, which locker system it is referring and then, okay. I think then we can come back to our actual problem. So our actual problem was uh, find optimal. So Sonia would like, uh, you would like to uh, implement that find locker. Yeah. So I was looking for uh, the size of that particular um, package. First of all, like uh, there should be. Um, I think you can implement that. So you already have that to find locker. Oh yeah, so I'm I was I need to find locker. So the find locker should take a package and then some magic should happen. I I think uh, then it would be if package dot size is equal to uh, size dot small. No, see. Uh, then it needs to iterate this. Small uh, can go in small. If small. So the main not thing is, yeah, if like small can go to medium and large. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So uh, medium can goes to medium and large, and large can goes to only to the large. Mm -hmm. Like this. Mm -hmm. Locker. Okay. Package size equal to size. I'm just thinking like if package dot size is equal to small. Uh, so if he has a small uh, size, he's going to return that. Uh, I need to iterate over there. Okay. Like I'm just thinking if I can just make over here and if the size is no, it, it should be okay. If Locker in uh, self dot small lockers, then if locker is available, then just assign that uh, package. To, uh, so I you will that, be again, yeah, it is in the control system, right? Uh, locker system. So that will I, actually be that map. Okay. Yeah, that map would be uh, that locker dot. No, this guy should only return a locker. That's it. I need to assign somewhere as well. No, this method should only return a locker. But otherwise, it would be again. We need to uh, iterate. How? Why you iterate? You return. We can return the. Up. We can return the locker. Uh, we we but. But like we'll be returning that locker ID for sure. But I'm thinking uh, we'll be just See, adding that in a map as well. name is find locker. It should only return a locker, and the rest of the things should be happen in uh, other Add package. Things. Yeah, makes sense. So he just has to find if that particular size locker is available and return the locker you, ID. You just make it uh, is available false and return that locker. But I don't think so. We have to make is available false there also. We actually have to make it when we add a package, correct? Okay, but if it, the oh, problem okay. is yeah. the multi-threading system, yeah, then yeah, yeah, then it will be a, yeah. Okay, so here, here just needs to make it false. Yeah, if the transaction fails, also you can I can make it true again. Yeah, hmm. and. And you, you, I think back there to return entire locker object. Sorry. 
So uh, again, if uh, so, you'll repeat for all the three, right? Hmm. Okay. But the thing was optimal, so I think there should be better way. The same thing was when we did the parking lot. We yeah, we that up, was same thing actually. We end yeah. up doing something like this, but this is not optimal. There should be some better way of doing it. Mm. You mean to say, first we need to find the package which has a bigger size? No, I was thinking like uh, we are iterating over a loop. Mm -hmm. Rather than have a kind of some kind of a ma a map or a yeah, map should be better. Yeah, empty lockers. So you it's it will become like a pool. You yeah. pull a package. You pull if it, yeah. You just need to check if that uh, list is empty. Yeah, yeah. Actually, that is right. So if if the list is not full, okay. Because we need to check the size of the list and with the capacity of the list. So there should be two lists actually, or might be I don't know. Uh, em there should be empty list, and uh, no, there should be uh, available list and non-available list. Well, if we have just a single list, okay, and then uh, okay, yeah, because okay, then we'll have to say, uh, store a capacity also, and then if if we add a package. Then we we put that in that list. So the size of the list keeps on increasing. We just compare if the the list size with the capacity. If it is lesser than the capacity, then yeah, we can assign it. Something like that, right? So I think yeah, same similar lines. We should we can have small lo lockers, empty, uh, available, non-available. Yeah. So first add all available to that. Yeah. Either of that, yeah. And then keep on playing. Uh, when the locker is free, send it back to its pool. Yeah. Yeah. Instead of going through the for loop, that can be optimized. Correct. Hmm. We can add. I can add a comment. Can you mention again what what we were thinking? Oh, uh, so basically, what we were thinking is like this. I can even show you. So wherever we have defined at the top, it should become a small locker uh, avail and not avail. So basically, uh, so. So, it should so you are saying that we should just put that in a non uh, not available list, and we'll just be checking on an available list. Hmm. Yeah, just remove from one list and just put it to, from available list. You pick up one item and then push it to the and append it to the uh, non available list. Yeah, if the length or something whatever was your yeah. algorithm. But in this case, we don't need that length because we know we have fixed size, right? If small available lockers available list is empty. Okay. So what I was thinking from here, uh, uh -huh. uh, if it is greater than, it will. Uh, but how we'll be assigning what are the lockers available or not available? Because the list will be uh, a list of lockers, correct? List will be list of lockers, yeah. Yeah. So, so the list of lockers we need to be like if it is empty, then we then we can add it. Available, which are available. So right now available is, in the sense that if it is empty or is or it is less than the its threshold value, then we can add it. Which threshold? it is not like we need to greater than zero. Oh, but the uh, lockers are, lockers will be fixed, right? So they are physical lockers, so they will be fixed. So based on that, no. My say, question is that in the locker available list, are we having the lockers IDs uh, stored? No, so no, no. It will have the locker object. object, right? Yeah, it's an actual locker object. So okay, so uh, in that, uh, in this particular uh, available, we'll be having. Uh, List of lockers. List of lockers. Yeah. Initially, it will be all the lockers will be there. Maybe twenty assigned for the small, 
mm-hmm. all of them so whenever you find a locker you grab that locker number and that object and push it into that not available one now mm-hmm. and same we have to do for uh, uh, also. for medium and large medium and, yeah we we'll have to remove it from the available list and then put it to the non available list yeah. mm. so then it will then i think this looks more optimal to me yeah absolutely yeah because we are not worried of which locker we have to find right in the small locker list we can just find the, whichever is the front one or the back one yeah but we need to yeah. maintain a based on a okay so size of we are already checking yes we are we are sizes are different so uh That's so actually that is good we maintained a uh, different sizes list already yeah uh, separately yeah that's the best part of doing it yeah okay so this thing we need to do for so for basically all three, yeah so basically this should be a switch statement elif no because size because, small can search are, in the medium as well Yeah, so that's what I'm telling. It should be switch statement. You come to first, okay. then you move to second, and then you move to third. So package. Now you have to also add if package size is uh, uh, small or uh, that I'm adding over here. Yeah. This size is dot large. No, but uh, large can also accommodate small. Okay, so that would be. Uh... Yeah, so but it... then uh, why he should have a large? Uh... So basically, uh, I'm just uh, re- uh, uh, recycling the parking lot. The parking lot. What we decided, if small is uh, not there, car can go to medium. If medium is not there, car can even go to large. I think then no. it would be like this. So efficiently use it. It should whatever. be or uh, or uh, at the. I think what you wrote was correct earlier. No, it's just like if it is in a medium size, it can go to the check the medium locker and as well as check for the large lockers. Where it is looking. So. But this this should be a requirement clarification with the interviewer, right? Mm. So let's say for now, uh, small should go to small and medium. Let's not worry too yeah. much about that. Okay. Because yeah. Because locker size resources are also very important. Because this this should have been clarified really really in the start. Yeah. Right now it's uh, it could be red flag also why the inter uh, why the candidate didn't check this requirement. But it's okay. Uh, now. Okay. Okay, so now uh, uh, coming back to the add package. So add package, you already have a find locker. So you will have a locker, and then you find locker. Hmm. If locker is none, then return package. Something you decided. return package otherwise uh, i'm just oh. commenting it right now mm-hmm. now in this case you will have to if not locker you will have to so we have to go back the list here so we have to do lock locker dot add package locker dot add package yeah we'll put the package inside the locker right yeah so this will again be the package yeah hmm then this i think we be... have created that okay yeah that is there I and remember. we need to add in a map as well no r- not right now uh, because the code is not generated so let's generate a code but we need to add but that will be oh. in the locker system no that is what we decided Yeah, so the so locker has the package text that we know which package is in which locker. I'm just like, okay, so we need a code as well as the I. Okay, yeah, we need to I generate the code. Yeah, just generate a code. I uh, I'm just writing that some yeah, like yeah. this code. Like the there there is a method to generate a code. Okay, so something would be there. Hmm. 
and uh, so now we have the code now we, we have to put that in a map and which are locker map or whatever you were having it it would be uh, it should be code it should be code and locker now we have to also be very careful like how to generate code now a lot of things depends on the code yeah then what else then send uh, notify you yeah, so you have Some, to uh, use like assume there is a method to notify user just i think that. a user would be locker dot it could user be pack no it is part of package not locker okay sorry package package dot user and whatever the who's you so let's All say we have a user to let's say you have notify user method yeah. something let's like this yeah. okay no user won't have that uh, thing there should be another method to do that part of lo locker system so should the locker not have a notification to the user no so so the so code has to go to the user i'm fine with anything but i don't see where we are passing the code i will say just call a method notify user yeah send the code user object comma user so now i don't know where this method will live so but based on user object it will send the email or whatever i don't know or it it might be a property of a package uh, like yeah uh, now it looks like it should be a part of package yeah because package should be knowing like how to notify user yeah and it makes more sense right that package is for a specific user no no uh, what can yeah yeah no what i meant was uh, yeah i think that's fine for now uh, do we need like in package also we need to assign that this package is uh, uh, is added or notification something if, uh, no like if it, that package is uh, and i why i mean to say like there's if that package is already is like is added to the locker then then it would automatically package would automatically send notify to the user let me think that is a actually good point actually even we have this cracking system we need somewhere like if i go and put my order number it should tell me where is my package hmm so but the notification whatever this method will be that should be doing both them right both of them notify yeah, it should, user actually be doing it should uh, notify user and it should notify the system also uh, some other system that uh, hmm that 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 package is assigned a locker like this should be something some i think i think that's a property something like assigned or the not package could have a property uh, status it should have only a property status it could have property like uh, uh, yes yeah, status shaped uh, in in transact in yeah, locker that, that what so that will be key num actually right yeah okay so what is the state of that yeah okay yes yeah, state of package that's it i think you just have something like uh, it should not be false it is enum oh yeah we can put none right now status enum yeah hmm yeah <laughs> okay it should deliver transit transaction i no no transit transit 
not big deliver transit yeah or else what is here yeah. or pick or pick or pick I think like this. Yeah, I think this yeah. is enough. Yeah. yeah. I think that is not that much important. Yeah. But let's come back. Our so our own one use case is gun, ad package. Mm-hmm. Other Now is the user actually picking up, correct? Hmm. Okay, but I think did we complete everything in ad package? It should. Why it is by default transit? I'm just putting like for a place as a place holder. I think holder. you can just put a none there. Okay. We just confuse okay. the interviewer that. Yeah. So when we did in say. Okay. So we, we have fine. Design. We have done this at uh-huh. the package. Something is generating the code and add to the locker. Hmm. Now the egg part left. Uh, Full return back uh, to delivery, right? That is one thing. I so think that we already done at the top line one sixteen. Okay. Uh huh. But let's Where come to the that? line one sixteen. In the same function, yeah. On one sixteen, we said okay, not so yeah, work. return the package. Correct. Yeah. I think this is okay. So. I think quickly we should touch upon the pick up. Pick up. so what it should be doing and i think there should be asynchronous process for the expired uh, codes like when the code is expired i think i think uh, when you are right uh, santosh mm-hmm. we should have a code entity code entity should have a lot of things code yeah. number expiry of the code hmm yeah i think we see it did that yeah it should have a couple of things Uh, do we have code expiry hmm. yeah i think uh, for now this should be okay right yeah and the map should also contain the code class then i think that's fine sonia let's move further we are running out of time hmm. this should be like find the locker this should be same mm-hmm. well uh, now we are finding the locker based on the code correct ha uh-huh. ha so we don't have that overloaded function oh yeah we just okay, have so to go to the map it yeah, will go to the map now yeah it should return uh yeah yeah this is much easier for us yeah And now open the locker. So how it will be opening the locker? I think just remove package that thing. Locker dot. We have a locker. Do uh, so you have that locker dot remove package? Okay. Locker dot. No. Yeah. You locker dot remove package. That's it. And it should. It all already gives a package back. So package equal to locker dot remove package. So one second. Uh, let me go to the package. I haven't implemented it. Something would be there. Yeah, return package. Okay, but in this case now, when we are having a map, are we assigning the code object to this one, or we are just yeah, the code ID? Yeah, yeah. yeah. because now we need two things uh, uh, even this method should check if that code is expired or not correct yeah so maybe before uh, line 112 we should do that yeah no hmm. it should go and look in the we need to maintain some code list then just mention like we need to do this stuff if it actually, is not expired actually the map should i can simplify this uh, the map should be code uh, dot id so what one second so what is thinking the map should be like this uh, it should be and this becomes now really uh, 
so so the map entry I was thinking should be like this. It should be code ID, comma, and then it could have code comma locker. So if you are saying code ID, what do you mean by code ID? Locker code. What? Yeah. What's the difference between this code and locker? So code is actual your uh, uh, value. Okay. Code object. It also has the expiry. Can we say that we'll be getting the locker code as an object only? No, we will not expose the code to the object or the user. We'll only give some identifier. Yeah. So, so you are saying now? this locker code is kind of an object? No, 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 this is a number one, two, three, four. Yeah, string or a number like that. And so based on that, from your map, uh, you can get two values. I am confused because locker code. Yeah, so yeah, this, think... what this code will be giving us? This is giving a number. Let's say code number. No, this class should be giving the code object. That's what. Yeah, I and am... then when you're putting in the map, uh, you put code object dot uh, whatever uh, mm -hmm. uh, code, and uh, yeah, and they are equal to uh, put a uh, put a list of locker comma code comma or locker comma code. Like we are putting an entity, uh, we are putting a couple there. Fair, okay. Ideally, uh -huh. ideally it should be a uh, another class. But okay, yeah. And now have... you have all the information you need. Right. So this is like now I have code and I have the object and the locker. So here, if I'll be. So first, so, we'll check. so first now your workflow is pick up. First you'll check if your locker code is in the map. If it is not there, return false or whatever. Yeah, because if the expiry happens, the locker code will... Uh, gone. Uh, yeah, it'll go. So he won't be able to access it at all. So first check if, if map not whatever... Uh, if, if locker, locker code, code not code. in... So whatever, through exception, whatever, we will come back to that. Then okay. your next thing is uh, get your code object. So, okay, from that one. Mm -hmm. Okay. It and should be a locker code and return a zeroth value. If okay, that is the code number. Okay. Yeah. This would be code object. And what and that, we don't need that, right? Because now we. We were just checking if it is expired by chance of our process didn't remove it. Okay, okay. It's an additional check. Okay, then you come here and then you put that. Uh, now you'll have to put uh, the code of. So this is that code object, right? Yeah, you'll have to put. And then remove package and return package. Remove package, return package, and then you'll have to say locker is available. Yeah. Yeah, before returning package. Yeah. Remove package. Uh, will remove remove package would do that. I think that locker uh, is you available. just remove the uh, you just remove that entry from yeah. Yeah. the map. That makes sense, correct. Remove the entry from the map.
Uh, okay, so. Oh, wow. I think we covered everything. Mm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It still needs to be like some yeah, polishing is to be done, but we. But this this is pretty fine, I would say. Yeah. Mm. We decided on two use case and we covered that. Absolutely. There could be the other only... use cases. Yeah. Uh, I think but... the code is only left. Oh, because that. So think code is something like that. Uh, what is that? Uh, tiny URL generator. So okay. that could go really complex. So you can just discuss with. Because that has to be unique, first of all. Mm. And that will be a system in its, itself, I would say. Yeah, that is a system. It's, uh, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. it, or it could be like uh, uh, what uh, DP discussed, like OTP generator. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yeah, so it is going to be another session. Yeah. So this is okay. So okay. I will say like yeah. wherever you see complex, just comment it out and say we'll visit it. Because in 30 to 40 minutes, we already took more than like one and a half hour. But in a real interview, we need to concise it in some way. Mm. Okay, I'll just pause it now. Yeah. Okay, I think we are good. Yeah. We are good, yeah. Yep. So could you also share the code what you uh, did here? Yeah.